Heavenly King, comfort of spirit of truth, present everywhere and filling all things, the treasure good and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse with every impurity and save our souls, gracious one. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. I mean, you may be seated. Welcome, everyone. Today, it's our third um, gathering, our third fellowship. And um, we will say a few thoughts um, about humility and we will read a couple of things from some elders and saints and if you have any questions you can always ask because humility is something that more or less we need it in our everyday life and without it we struggle and the problem is not that we struggle the problem is that if we don't have humility we just find it very difficult to go towards God and to be connected with God and then to end up in the eternal life which is why we were created. So just a few thoughts to start with. To start with. The man who finds excuses cannot repent and cannot pray. So if when they tell us something we find excuses to justify ourselves. Of course this means that we don't have humility. But it also means that we cannot repent. And the person who does not have repentance cannot pray. <clears throat> if we don't feel um, guilty about what we've done, then our prayer it's like useless. We can't, we can't connect with our Creator. Only the humble person can love God. But even if you want to love God or the other people, you have to empty yourself. There is no other way to love others if you don't empty yourself. What I'm trying to say is that when we love someone, we cannot demand love in return. So we can't say to someone, I love you and, and because I love you, you have to be with me for the rest of your life. Or, I love you, my child, so you have to marry this and this person. Or, I love you, so can you help me with this? Because this is like spiritual abuse, it's like psychological abuse, it's like we try to blackmail people to do what we want and someone used to say if you love me and you want me to do things I think I'm better off if you don't love me because then I'm free so to be able to love others we have to be truly humble and that means that we will love someone, we will love God but we will not ask anything in return. And this means that if the person that we love wants to do something different than what we think is right, then he or she is free to do what they want to. If we don't let them, it means that we don't love them. It means that we love ourselves and we want them for ourselves. And this is selfishness. This is not love. And once someone wanted to become a monk and his mother was telling him if you become a monk I will commit suicide and he told her but if I don't become a monk I will commit suicide so choose who has to commit suicide it's not that they would commit suicide it was like a joke but it was serious and then he said to his mother anyway even if you do commit suicide you have less years in front of you so it's probably better if if I, if I go to the monastery and he ended up in the monastery and his mother didn't commit suicide and now he's a bishop um, anyway that's just an example to show you that our love cannot be um, de depressing our love cannot be like a bear hug because, because then it's like we don't care about the others but we only care about expressing our love or 
making others respect our love. And this is not a humble thing. This is a very, very selfish thing. Also, we should look where we are to blame and not where we are to blame the others. Like if someone does something, we should look into our own mistakes and not try to blame the others. The Gospel says they are blessed, the ones that they are um, poor in the spirit. And blessed here means it's like the highest form of joy. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, meaning the humble ones. Now, something that we all come across in our everyday life is anger. Anger is an expression of pride. And um, also if we, are, if we don't have patience and if we can't stand someone and if we manage our anger, it means that we put others first and it means that we, we go towards humility. And sometimes when they tell us something, it's so difficult not to answer and it's so difficult to keep our mouth shut that there is a story um, from the monks of the desert and the story goes like this. So it was a monk and his brother told him something that insulted him and he shut his mouth and he said nothing and after a little bit he spat blood and they asked him what is this blood, where is this blood coming from and he said this is the um, <coughs> insult that I just received and I forced myself not to talk. And this, this actually has happened in real life as well. So it's not, it's not just a story. When we try not to talk back, when we try to stay humble, sometimes it's, it's as difficult as spitting blood. That's how much, how much difficulty we go through to do this. Also, the humble person does never despair because he never hopes in himself and he never thinks that there is something that God cannot do and he always has his hope to God. And he is not lost in his sensitivity. Some people are very sensitive and they want others to understand that they are sensitive so that they will attract attention but that's not a humble thing to do that's something that goes around our ego we want others to focus on us the humble person focuses on the others and God and not on himself and the humble person is very careful does not tempt himself so if you know that by going somewhere or by doing something this will be very tempting for you. This is not a humble thing to do. This is a risk that you take and it means that you don't take your spiritual life seriously and you're not humble. And if we are risking things, then it means that we are proud. The humble person, it's easy to be governed. You don't have to pull him like a donkey that you can't get him where you want to. And it, the humble person, it's easy to live with. He doesn't have... Um, and, the, and, and this... He is easy to live with, and this is not a weakness, but this is self-control. It's easy to judge others, as we said, especially to judge others that they have authority. And this could be priests, bishops, everyone around us. But, as we mentioned before, we never think of our own responsibilities. And I want to explain this a little bit better. So, we see something that is bad, someone does something bad, or someone does not react when he should have. And this person has a position. 
could be a priest, a bishop, it could be a man in authority and our work or anything else. It's very easy and very tempting for us to judge this person, but we never thought that if we ourselves had prepared ourselves the right way, then God could have used us for this position. So, let's say that there is a person that judges a bishop. But if this person had a careful life, then God could have given this person this position. And instead of the church to have to go through this bishop that is responsible, for an example, um, the person who is judging now, if he was better and if he was close to God, God would have chosen him and things for the church would have been better. But it's easy for us to judge others instead of realizing that the reason why our authorities are such and such is because that's what we deserve. That's what the gospel says. Every authority is given from above. And if we don't take our own responsibilities to be useful to God and to others, we deserve such authorities. And we can't blame them because at the end of the day, it's our fault that God could not find someone better. If we were better, God could have chosen us and used us in the other person's position. And let's say that a woman judges a man and a woman judges a bishop or something like this. And we could say, but a woman could not be a bishop. Yes. But if this woman prepares her children the right way, then her children could, on, could not only be bishops, but they could be saints. And that's our responsibility. So instead of looking around us to find responsibilities for things that are happening in the church and outside at work, we have to look inside us and realize that if we play our role correctly, then the others are not to blame. So if we don't teach our children as they grow up to go for confession, to go for Holy Communion, to love God and to help their fellow men and to learn how to share, then of course we won't have good leaders in the future and the responsibility falls on us and not on the ones that they take the leaderships. Also, when someone has the skills and is asked to take a position, it's not a humble thing to refuse this position by saying that I'm too humble for this, I can't do it, pretending that, prepen, prepen, um, pretending that he is humble. And I will give you an example. We know that the mother of God, Theotokos, he was the most humble person on earth and that's why she ended up giving birth to Christ and that's why the fathers of the church they say that she is second after the Holy Trinity. Now, when the archangel Gabriel went to her and asked her to become the mother of God, she could have said, I'm human, I'm a humble person, I can't do it. This would have cost all of us our salvation. Just this one no that the Virgin Mary could have said. But she didn't say yes or no. She said, whatever is God's will, that's what should happen. And that's what happened. So, on a year, Virgin Mary emptied herself to be able to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. And she did not put her opinion about herself. And she did not put her knowledge about what usually happens in the humankind because what happened was first and only time that ever happened the God to be incarnated she did not put her knowledge as a border between her and God she just let God use her the way he thought it was right and Christ was born so sometimes 
rejecting things by saying we are humble, it actually indicates ego and it indicates pride. And it's not a humble thing. There was a father once and he went for a sort of a confession to an elder and he told him he was crying and he was telling him that because of my ego, because of my pride, my kids do not behave well. And I don't know if this was the case, but it's something that we should definitely think about. If our example in the family is humble enough to inspire our kids, and if our example in the family is humble enough to have the strength to absorb, to attract God's grace in our family. To be humble doesn't mean to always do humble looking things, but it means to be obedient to God, as we said before, and to our spiritual father and to the church, and to follow our conscience. If we don't do so, then the one thing brings the other, and our conscience will be hard as rock, and then our conscience will not judge us anymore, and it won't be easy for us to realize what's the right thing, what the right thing to do is. Whatever the salt is for the food, this is what humility is for all the virtues. If someone does not have humility, cannot go close to any of the virtues. For those that do iconography, I would say that humility is like the base color. It's the first color that we put on the clothes or on the face, and on top of it we can build everything. If this is not done accurately, if this is not done correctly, the rest that we build on it, the foundation, if the foundation is not correct, the rest does not look as it should be and it's very difficult to fix afterwards. I will read to you a few things from some fathers of the church, but before I do this, I don't know if anyone has any questions so far. Maybe I'll read a few things and then we'll see. So someone said to St. Paisius once, Yeroda, at some point Abba Isaac says that humility comes once one has acquired virtues. Could it be that you did not understand it correctly? If a person does not have humility, no virtue can come near him said Yerodas. So in other words, said this person Yeroda, does one who has humility have all the other virtues? Well, of course. The humble person has all the spiritual fragrances, fragrances, simplicity, meekness, unconditional love, godness, forbearance, sacrifice, obedience. Since he has spiritually poverty, he also enjoys the fullness of spiritual wealth. He is also devout and silent. And this is why he has kingship with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, who had great humility. Even though she carried God incarnate in her womb, she did not speak out at all until Christ himself spoke at the beginning of his public ministry when he was 30. So, we see here about the humility of the Mother of God, but we also see about the humility of Christ, who, although he was God, he did not try to show off anything. And he did not talk, he did not start his public um, mission until he was 30 years old and ourselves were always impatient and we want things to be done yesterday but God himself he was waiting to find the only person worthy of himself to be incarnated which was Theotokos 
and this took him centuries and once he found Panagia Theotokos he was waiting nine months in her womb and then 30 years until he would start preaching and then he preached for only three years and that was it and we want to do everything at once and we don't have patience for anything and we think that this is the right thing to do but if we don't understand that patience and humility is above rushing and doing things the right way, the way we think is right, then whatever we will do, it won't have great results. So, I'll read to you something else. To know God is to be humble as He is humble. The Lord Himself calls us to follow Him. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me that I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest in your souls. If we are to know the mysteries of the Son of God, we must have the meek and humble heart of the Lord Jesus. Unless we become meek and humble, we shall remain unknown by Him and alienated from His divine mysteries. The perpetual concern of the saints is to abide before Christ in humility of heart. They have learned that only the humble in heart can receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They have understood the twofold movement of our Lord downwards in His kenosis, meaning to empty Himself, and then upwards. They strive to abase themselves as their strength allows to submit themselves to every obedience of men for the Lord's sake, knowing that He will exalt them in due time. And of course, we can try to be humble, but the real humility, we could say that it's a gift from God. Like when St. Silwan experienced Jesus he felt in his heart the humility of God of Jesus and that's when you can understand that it doesn't matter what happens it doesn't matter what they do to you it doesn't matter if you're healthy or not it, nothing, nothing really matters what really matters is to stay in this humble state expecting God and when you are in this humble state expecting God and, and living for Him and Him alone then He will definitely come and then, and then what you will experience from this life will be indescribable and someone asked once St. Paisios how long do we need to get God's grace some people they might live all their life spiritually thinking that they live spiritually and they will do a lot of askeses, a lot of strict life and they might think that they do something that they ask someone but they might never receive God's grace and some others they might receive God's grace straight away if they are humble if the man becomes humble within a minute can be dressed up with the divine grace and become an angel and enter heaven but if he becomes proud within a second he could lose everything that's what happened to the devil who was an angel and within an instant he lost everything and he became the devil so if the man wants to, he, be, he can become a sheep. But if he doesn't want to, he becomes a goat. And that's up to us. So the grace goes to the humble person. And that's where the Spirit of God rests. And we said 
in our previous fellowship something that we have to mention again because it's extremely important. So when we realize that the benefit of the ones that we love it's not keeping them close to us we should let them follow their paths and this has to do with the spiritual fathers as we said Saint John the Forerunner once he realized that Christ was the one he sent all his apostles all his disciples Saint John the Forerunner gave all his disciples to Christ and they were his first apostles it's the same with our children we can't keep our children for ourselves we have to give them to God one way or another it doesn't matter if they will create a family it doesn't matter if they will become monks or nuns it doesn't matter if they will become priests or if they will go for a mission it doesn't matter what really matters is that we have to give our children to God God gave us our children we are responsible for their upbringing but it doesn't mean that we owe them and that's why we can't stop them from following Christ and that's why we should give them the tools to follow Christ because if we don't teach them how to follow Christ it's our fault if when they become adults they go and they get married in a park without wanting to do anything with the church and they don't get married to Christian people and, and after that that was it your grandchildren they will have nothing to do with the church not wanting anything to do with God and that's the end of the story for the Christianity in your families do you have any questions so far? It's not an easy thing to be humble and we all, we all have to try but if we don't it's like we can't build anything spiritual in our lives without it. It's extremely important. I'll read you a few more things from St. Paisios because he talks about humility a lot. Yet the how is humility cultivated? And he answers. Humility is cultivated through philotimo. Philotimo is a very difficult word to explain. Anybody can enlighten us as to what philotimo is? Because it's very difficult to explain it. Yes? Yeah. Um, oh. I, I don't really know but I read recently that it could be translated as eager goodness how do you say it? eager goodness so um, give us an example um, doing things out of love and not expecting anything yes. um, constantly yes. anyone else with something different Wait, wait. And we have a, also, yes. Well, the, the word itself translates into a friend of honor. So it's to maybe do the honorable thing without, without expectation of anything after. Yes, but Philotimo, see, the honor sometimes hides some pride. When the Philotimo doesn't, it, it, the Philotimo is something deep that. that you do it out of love. Uh, Peter? Is it um, someone that loves doing what the other people have said? Is actually, he's a lover of doing um, things out of love, not expecting something in return? It is. Um, Anyway, all these things and even more than that, the English language doesn't have a word for Philotimo. 
Um, and although the, etymologically it means philosophy to me, um, friend of honor, that's not what it means. It, it means to be motivated to do something out of goodness, out, out of wanting to make someone happy, out of wanting to help others, to get out of your, um, out of your way to help someone. So, St. Paisio said, humility is cultivated through philotimo, and it is also cultivated through the manure of our failures. failures. It all depends. A person with philotimo attributes all of his good traits to God. He acknowledges the many benefactions of God, realizes that he has not responded appropriately, is humbled and constantly praises God. The more he is humbled and praises God, the more he is showered with divine grace. This is voluntary humility. Involuntary humility, on the other hand, is the type of humility through, uh, brought about by long-term falls into sins. Naturally, voluntary humility has much greater value than involuntary humility. It resembles a field with good soil, wherein the trees bear fruit without need of fertilizers or manure and their fruit is delicious. Involuntary humility resembles a field with poor soil and trees of which in order to bear fruit require both fertilizer and manure yet still do not give fruit as delicious. So what St. Paisius tries to tell us is that it's worth ourselves to try and humble ourselves to help others and in every aspect of our lives because if not God allows the, pr the proud people to fall and we'll probably talk about it later on again but the reason of our falls a lot of times is our pride and we don't know why we fell but it is because of our pride that God lets us fall in other things. Any questions so far? So are you saying that involuntary humility is not good? But yet if someone, if someone falls because of pride and probably realizes it, like can he or can she um, grow in humility from there? Can he? Can she grow like in humility from there? Like yes, we can use our falls to um, gain humility. We can use everything. It's like even your sins. You can use them to get humility and, and experience and move on and become a better person. But why do you need to fall when, by humbling yourself, you don't need to fall? and you will get way further. Does this make any sense? We can fall and, be, and become humble, but we don't need to fall. If we humble ourselves, we don't need to fall. And we will become more spiritual by, by when we fall and we become humble. Like, um, there are saints that they did things that they were not right. So by falling, then they realized that what they did was wrong and they humbled themselves and they became even greater saints. But you don't need to go through all this pain. By humbling yourself, yourself, with your own will, you can become great like the Virgin Mary did without falling into anything. Does this make any sense? But you can use both. But why going through the pain of falling when you can become great without all this pain by humbling yourself. So it's not so it's bad thing. So, um, so. so it's not necessarily a bad thing even if you had to fall. 
No, and it's not because we, in our church we have forgiveness. You are forgiven as soon as you repent. But but why do you have to fall when you don't have to? And then it's easier. Does it make any sense? Any any yes? Yeruta, can you give us an example um, of, of our pride that sometimes makes us fall? I will keep reading and that's the answer to your question. Um, so someone said to Elder St. Paisius, Yeruta, I'm in a very difficult position. I have carnal thoughts and plunge into sorrow. I am worried that I will never recover. Have courage, my good child, and Christ will prevail in the end. In essence, it is not so much the fault of our poor flesh as it, are, as it is our pride. As a matter of fact, you have many skills which God has naturally given you, but because you are somewhat negligent and careless, the enemy finds the opportunity to ex exploit your abilities and sends you reeling in pride. And while you could have washed your face with tears of gladness and gratitude towards God, instead you wash it with bitter tears of pain and worry. So think. If we do not become humble voluntary, we will be humbled involuntary, because the good God loves us. Take courage, therefore, my child, and Christ will prevail. It is a storm that will pass and bring many good things in its wake. You will come to know yourself better. You will be obliged to become humble and according to the spiritual laws, the grace of God, which was previously obstructed by pride, will now be obliged to come to you. So, someone falls into carnal sins or carnal thoughts, and this is the example, and this is because of pride, and this is because someone does not take care of his spiritual life. I don't know if this answers the question. So basically, once we realize we have weaknesses, we have to do everything we can in order to, like, yes, heal yes. the weaknesses and go around them. So, and we have to accept this because if we don't accept it, then. This means that we are proud. Yes. And having a careful life, this is humility. As we said before, if you know that by going somewhere you will be tempted, don't think that you are strong enough. Just avoid the temptation, and that's a humble thing to do, and you will have your reward. If you think that by speaking to someone you will get angry, don't go there. But on this, actually I was going to say that sometimes, yeah, there are people that we, not we don't like, but we don't get along with them. And sometimes you say to yourself, I have to avoid them. But if you think about it, after you might have thoughts that by avoiding them, you, don't, you are not doing the right thing. But actually the right thing is to avoid them because in this way you, you're not going to fall. You can never win against your thoughts. Regardless what you think of doing, your thoughts, they will, the logismi, the tempter will give you thoughts that they will, they will make the waters very foggy and you won't be able to realize what's right and what's wrong. But if you try and do what you think is the most humble thing, and if you try to do what you think is the most peaceful thing inside you, that's the answer to what you should be doing. And that's the humble thing, and that's how you avoid the temptation, and that's how God will reward you. Yeah, I don't know if I can ask a question. 
Um, what's the best way um, to cultivate humility in kids? Obviously, some kids, like my own, some are more predisposed to be humble, others not so. What's the best way to cultivate that humility in the kids? Is it by example of the parents? Presumably so. I would say the example is very important, but I heard a story once which was very impressive. It was a, I don't know if, it, if he was a priest or not, but he had two sons and he didn't know how to deal with them because he wanted them to go close to God, but at the same time he couldn't really tell them to, otherwise they could react. So what he was doing once they were falling asleep, instead of him going to bed, he would sit next to their bed and pray to God for their salvation. And then God helped these kids. So if, if you do everything in your power, give them the right example and explain to them why mom and dad does this. And when you see that they do something which is proud, explain to them, this is not a good thing. This is not something that will get you closer to God. This is something that will you, will, you will have difficulties in your life if you deal with things like that. And the person who's humble and they tell him something and he doesn't reply, he doesn't answer back, it's not a weak person. They have to understand that. When Jesus was not replying to whatever they were accusing him, it's not because he was weak. It's because he knew what he was doing. But that's also a humble thing to do. And if you give them the right example, if you, give them, um, if you keep them close to confession, which is a humbling thing, and Holy Communion, which is receiving the King of all, then your kids, they will pick it up. And you will be impressed. Because kids have a lot of love, if you motivate their love, they can understand that it's a good thing to be humble. Yeah. But every character, every kid has a different character. We know that. And we have to work a little bit differently with every kid. But, but these are the general things that they should be working for everyone. Any, any other questions? Just further, in, in the real life, the more you humble, the more you seem to be weak. And the more you get attacked, the more you get actually um, abused, if you like, bullied. So how do you get that real balance between the two? I mean, you don't want to be weak, but at the same time, you're trying to be humble. And the more you humble are, the more you're attacked. Being humble does not mean that you are weak. We just said that. But we have to have some limits when people that try to hurt our families. And we said something about it in the past. Um, but yes, what we could say here is that if there is someone that tries to hurt your family, you have to protect your family. But you can do it in a humble way. So, if someone, um, let's say that that's for the younger people, if someone um, goes out and someone else tries to start a fight, to protect your friends, you don't need to fight, you can just walk away. They might call you names, they might whatever, but walking away is the safest and most humble thing to do. But when it comes to, um, like, at work, when, when someone is trying to um, hurt your job, and you, you, have, you have to do what you have to do to protect your job and your income to protect your family. But you don't need to do it in a proud way. You don't need to get into a fight. You, you do what you have to do in a very humble way, in a peaceful way, and in a way that is not a reaction to their action. It's something which is after prayer, after deep consideration of what you should be doing, and after finding it as the most peaceful in your heart to do. 
and then God will be with you anything else? Yorinda, if we said that we wanted to acquire humility, what practical sort of steps would you take or would you suggest that we take to acquire humility? St. Paisius says, I've got it here somewhere, but he says that, um, let's say that someone tells you one word and you find it insulting. Instead of answering with two words, just keep your mouth shut. That's one example. Right? Um, and this is the mentality behind what to do in order to become more humble. So, God will bring us opportunities in our lives that people, they will say things, people, they will do things to us, and they are hurtful. They are things that if we wanted to be just, like if we wanted to be, to keep our spots, keep our position, we should react and say something and do something. But if, if you push yourself and you do the humble thing, then this is how you get up, you end up becoming more humble. But um, it's easy, it's easy you yourself to say for yourself, I'm not worthy, I can, I'm not um, spiritual enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. And it's easier than the next thing that I will say. So it's easier when someone that you love does something to you to forgive them because you love them. But when someone that you dislike does something small to you, you can be furious. This is pure pride. And you have to fight it. And you have to realize that even the scratch that the person that you dislike does to you, it's, it's not for you to get upset, to get angry, to start saying things and start a whole process of thinking about this person, how to get your, um, how to get your revenge or anything. Because then you just um, fell into the trap. So in our everyday life, there will be things that they will... Um, force us to react in a proud way and if we push ourselves not to that's when we become more spiritual yeah, but someone might say someone who hasn't experienced the grace of God and the fruits of the humility that uh, being humble actually is quite depressing depressing? yes or someone might say, but, okay, we know that we have to be uh, good people, good Christians, but if you think about it, are Christians always the ones that they have to be at the bottom and the others have to step on them? So what are we going to say to these people and to ourselves sometimes? <laughs> if we feel depressed from being humble, it means that we don't know what humility can give us because for example as we said before um, Jesus was waiting for thousands of years to find a person worthy of himself Panagia, Virgin Mary then he waited nine months in her womb then he waited 30 years to start preaching and then we see him at the end of his mission, when he was 33 years old, he went and he washed his disciples feet. How humbling is this? Do you think he was depressed? He was, he was always one with his father, meaning he was never without his divine joy. 
but he knew where he was coming and where he was going to. He knew why he was doing this. He knew that the disciple to wash the, the master to wash his disciples' feet is not a humbling thing to do, but it's a lesson that if these people don't learn, the humanity cannot go forward. So, when someone does something to you, by saying, in the monastic expressions, we say evlogison and we move on, so like, forgive me, and we move on, it's not to be depressed, it's to be happy because God gave you the opportunity to be humble, and this is a crown for you in heaven. And this is not to make you depressed. If you're depressed, you have problems. It means that you have to be happy because as hurtful as it is, it's very rewarding. It's like you get, you, you have a flu and you have to drink a syrup that it's disgusting. But if you don't, you will be worse. When if you do, you have to be happy that you go through this disgusting experience because you will be better. So, bitter things are useful and we should not be sad about it because that's how it is. Sometimes it's the tempter or our ego that makes us feel depressed, sad. We have to take a step back and think, all right, they insult me. And I'm not saying that I'm doing this, but that's how it should be. Or they tell me something that makes me like very upset. Couple of deep breaths, couple of times to say Jesus' prayer, and think, what have I lost? Is my eternal position still there waiting for me? It is. Who cares? No one can take away your soul from you unless you give it to the devil. And when you fall into these traps, you give your soul to the devil. That's what you do. You don't fight the person who fights you because behind this person that fights you is the devil. And the devil makes this person fall. And instead of you realizing that he's a victim and feel sorry for him, you get upset with him, so you fall as well. And then, if you realize this, why being depressed by approaching the things the right way, the winning way. It's all how you think. It's all the way you deal with things. And when we think that um, I have to say something because otherwise the other person is not going to learn, what do we do? If it's your position to teach, say something. But if it's not your position to teach, then pray for the other person. And if the other person is capable of learning, God will teach him. If the other person is not capable of learning, if you try to teach him, you will just create a worse reaction to your reaction. Because he had the action, you have a reaction, and then there is a second reaction, which will be even worse. And it ends nowhere. It just gets, it gets very, very messy. It doesn't stop. And then you lose your peace. Um, is it the anger sometimes that we feel always an indication of pride? When we see something, for example, and we feel strongly about it, and we may feel angry about it at some stage. Is it always pride? Because we are proud. Um, Saint Paisio says that anger is an indication of pride. Now, anger might be coming from other sources as well, like, um, let's say someone is pregnant, not you, <laughs> and, and the hor hair hormones are all over the place. That's a natural reason. But I believe that the tempter is using um, the way that our heart would go and sends it the easier. I don't know if this makes any sense. So if someone inside him is 
generally a humble person, you will see that it will be very difficult for this person to get upset. And I will give you an example from the Desert Fathers again. So there were two um, brothers in Christ, two monks, that because they could never fight, they thought, um, all right, let's see how it is to have an argument. They could never fight, fight between them because um, if the smallest thing was happening, um, they were both saying straight away, forgive me. And that was, it. that was the end of the story. Without holding it back, without thinking anything about it afterwards. And this was the end of the story. So they said, we have this item. I will say it's mine, you will say it's yours, and we will create an argument. Just to see how it is to create an argument. Because they couldn't fight. So the first said, this item is mine. And the other one said, no, this item is mine. And then the first one said, okay, if it's yours, take it. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that we can find excuses for our anger, but at the end of the story, at the end, yes, we have to be humble enough to realize that if we were humble, we would not get upset in the first place. So, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, when we see something around us happening that we don't agree with, that we think is wrong, um, we may get upset about it. Not necessarily wanting to do something about it, but we see something that we think is wrong. And um, I guess, when is it that it comes I'm not from. telling you not to take action, but what I'm telling you is when you're taking action to maintain your peace. There is a difference there. Anger is, has nothing to do with your peace. If you're angry, you lost your peace. But if you have to teach your child, if you have to take a position in the church against abortions, you have to do it. But you do it without losing your peace and knowing that you do your very, very best, but God is above everything. If he wants this law not to get through, it won't get through. If he allows this law to get through, if God allows it, who are we to, to do anything? Because we tried already, we can't do anything. Does this answer your question? question. Um, I've got a question regarding... Say, for example, you have a child that has an exam result and it's, it's not that... He does an exam at school, a test of some sort, and he gets a poor result. Now, he's humbled because he got a very bad result. Now, he goes home and his parents, they're expecting something brilliant and they tell him off. But you're telling him off for being, for being humbled because, for some reason, he didn't do well. So, as a child, how do you deal with it? That was my experience. Now, on the other side... As a parent. As a parent, as I'm as thinking, parent. well, how do I deal with it? Because I want the best for my child. Yes. Um, as a parent, you have to know the strength of your children and not ask more than what they can handle and help them realize what they can handle so they're not humbled in a bad way because when someone gets a bad result it's not just being humble it could be being humiliated meaning his ego is hurt that's not humility that's something that um, hurt you hurt your ego when the ego reacts this is not humility Alright? So when we are hurt because we're not the best, we could have been. Yes. This could be a pride. This could be pride. It's not a humbling experience. I mean, us reacting to this, it's pride. I don't know if if you can understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But when we go through falls, 
the child gave an, an exam and failed, if, when we go through false, um, we have to realize that if we did something that was not as it was supposed to be, we have to fix it. I'm saying as kids. So if we could have studied more, we should have done it. But if we did our best and we just didn't pass, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. It could be ability or it could be God's will. It's not necessarily ability because someone could be very smart and start study everything and then it could be something that it just you didn't mean not to study or you didn't mean not to understand but this is what happened, it happens. All right? So as a parent, you have to see where your kid stands within this frame and explain to him if it's his fault or not, for, or not his fault and if he can fix it you tell him, look, you can do better, why not doing better? And, and explain to him that if he doesn't do this, there will be um, consequences in his life. And if he could not do better, tell him, look, God has something else for you. It's not the end of the world. It's not for you to be sad. It's for you to realize your strength. Yeah, that makes sense. Just, just one more, just on that. Um, when you're praising a child, I know it's the opposite of humility, but when you're praising a child, at what stage do you stop praising him? We have to be careful because um, we can use it when they feel down or when we need to give them a bit of self-confidence, but not overdoing it because then they can become proud. So you have, have to be very careful with this. going back um, we said that there are some people that they are naturally predisposed to anger or they get upset they are naturally what? predisposed like they have to what? to anger okay. or other people they are predisposed to other like to humility but now because we are talking about anger but does this mean that God discriminates? What do you mean? Because someone might think that, okay, might say for himself, I get angry easily, so um, that's why uh, or I grew up in a family that they were all angry, fighting, fighting so I have um, um, the excuse. I have an excuse about it. And, but if we, if we accept this, this means that God discriminates and to some, someone gives them um, the ability to be humble and to other people gives them the ability to be angry all the time. That's the same with everything. Someone might be good in basketball and someone might be terrible. But having gifts does not mean that God did not give you the right tools. These are tools. Now, what measures is your personal effort, we talk about humility, personal effort towards humility and towards not being upset with others and, and, and all these things. If someone can naturally do it, this person, his reward will not be as great as yours if you are... Um, and person that gets angry easily and um, if um, you have the gift of not getting angry easily you will struggle in other things so it's it's one thing or another that we have to correct in ourselves but but whoever does not have the gifts naturally and fights for them this is worth more than if you are naturally a calm person. Yes. And, and by saying this, what does it mean to be calm? Calm doesn't mean the person who does not talk about what he's upset. Because the person who talks about what he's upset can maybe after forget about it and that's it. But there might be people that they will tell you nothing and hold it for the rest of their lives. This is way worse than 
um, the people that they express it and you know that what you see is what you get when the others they will hold it and then they will find you on a weak point and shoot you or tell you a hurtful comment or never forgive you so regardless our difficulties weaknesses or predispositions uh, or maybe our health so many things that they can make us uh, get angry um, this means that it depends on us if we are to control our anger or not yes because if we want to control it God will will give us the way to mm -hmm. and I told you this before there was someone who's still alive and he was a person that he would get upset very easily and he realized that this was a very big problem because he wanted to follow Christ in his life so one night he prayed to the best of his ability and by the morning he had no anger at all God had taken it away which was a miracle and miracles happen when God wants but what I'm trying to say is that um, if it's for our benefit God will help us towards this direction if we're not humble enough then we won't get the help that we, want, we ask and after that this person that his anger was removed if you would see him to get upset because he was an abbot um, and he's still alive but he's very old and sick so if he was to get upset with someone looking like he got upset with someone it's not because he was upset it was because he was raising his voice just to let them understand that what they're doing is not right the same way that sometimes we have to be very firm with our kids not losing our peace not being upset with them but just to teach them that look what you're doing is wrong from the beginning to the end it's wrong and that's it anything else? Uh, the person realizes mentally that he doesn't have humbleness at all doesn't have humility yes what's next step? to ask for some sorry? to ask for some <laughs> but St. Paisio says as we said before that humility you don't go to the supermarket and buy some humility if you ask for it it will come to you in the least expected way and it will hit you on the head and you wish that you never asked for it so I'll give you an example from his life when he was a monk at the monastery of Stomio in Ipiro um, he was going in the holy altar in this church where there was this priest uh, because he was a monk he was sitting in the holy altar and he was having communion, holy communion inside the holy altar and this one Sunday the priest before he went to the church St. Paisius asked God to make him humble or something like this so when the time of the holy communion came um, the priest told him go outside to have Holy Communion you are not worthy to have Holy Communion inside and St. Pais instead of getting upset or anything he went outside he read the communion prayers and he had Holy Communion thinking to himself that he was not worthy of anything else and then the joy that he received from this Holy Communion was unbelievable now what happened was that straight after the priest who was a very pious priest went running to him fell onto his feet trying to apologize because he could not understand why he did what he did and St. Paisius explained to him it was not you it was me that I prayed for humility and God allowed his grace to be withdrawn from you only for me to receive a lesson but the priest couldn't understand it but this is what happened so if you ask for humility it will come to you it could come through your family it could come through your friends through your work through your own thoughts through your own difficulties 
and be very gentle with how much you ask because if you receive as much as you ask you might not be able to handle it and if the person realizes that he's humble is that already a temptation a sin I uh, haven't heard any humble person saying that I'm humble but yes um, to realize to realize that you're humble it takes a lot you have to be one with God before you say that and and the gospel this morning was saying something that it placed in our mind all these days the gospel this morning said that the disciples, the apostles they couldn't perform a miracle and Jesus told them if you have faith as a mustard seed you will tell to this mountain go from here there and the mountain will move so they asked St. Paisius again once what does this mean? and he said it's not that people don't have faith as big as a mustard seed they have that much faith but they're not humble enough so if with this faith they were to perform miracles they would be so proud that they would lose their salvation and that's why these miracles don't happen because we don't have the humility so we don't have as we said the foundation for the miracles to happen in our lives Um, when you're in confession with your spiritual father, okay, maybe not asking for humility from God, but could you work with your spiritual father? Is that the same thing? Like to ask them, um, say if you didn't know, um, like you're angry all the time, but you didn't understand that that's because you're being prideful or whatever, how do you, um, could you work through your spiritual father to try and... Um, grow if that makes sense like of course you can like do you yeah and say for instance if you have children and do you believe that um sometimes you get yourself like you see a mirror of yourself of what your children's behavior is and everything like that and you want better for them do you think by not saying anything at all and walking away is going to help um, for the whole family yes. like it's back to weakness yes yes it, it does make sense but it's it's what we said before like if as a parent you have to be firm on few things you have to be firm but don't lose your peace uh, because when you lose your peace this is anger but when you're firm in order to teach them this is doing your job if by trying to do this you know that you will get upset leave it for the moment that you, you inside you you will have the peace and the strength to do so and tell them remember what happened then don't do this again that's no and when they don't want to listen oh. and when they because um, we try and start a fresh day but at the time you're so angry with what you see or hear you go the next day and then they're more angry the kids are more angry? Or yeah, no, the kids are more angry because you're bringing up their behaviour again, what you didn't like, and, and you can just, see they're not just, listening. Just make sure that you're in the right state and pray for them. If they're angry, too bad. They have to listen to what you're saying. We can't just wait for them to relax. It's not... Yes. You, you take care of your spiritual life and by doing so, God will provide for them as well. Don't wait for them to calm down. Unless, unless we don't talk about kids' kids and we talk about like teenagers where your actions can cause huge reactions when you might have to wait a little bit until they calm down. But now that they're little, you're the boss. You have to teach them what you have to teach them. The 
is a phrase that sends me into panic a little bit, and I only know it in Greek, so I'll say it in Greek. Uh, o Theos Epiphanis Aditasete. Epiphanis Aditasete. Um, what are the what are the steps to to take out some of these thorns that we have or I have? So is it through confession? Is it through fasting? Is it through forcing yourself to pray? Or is it a combination of things? How how can you start taking some of these it's thorns out? It's everything, but but um, the fathers of the church they talk about epignomonikita pinosi. Um, so just before that to say that the phrase that you said is that uh, God um, who can translate this in English goes against the ones that they are proud okay so um, and you asked what to do in order to um, get some of these problems out of our system um, it goes back to what we said so far but the fathers of the church they talk about epignomonikita pinus that's a Greek thing and it means to, to um, willingly humble ourselves as we said now the humility can humble can the humility can happen either by others forcing it to us one way or another by giving us problems that we have to deal with in a humble way or by us ourselves trying to humble ourselves. You have to do both and on top of it pray to God and on top of it try to stay as close to God as possible but when you have a family you have to make sure that you put the others above yourself and this means this means a lot of things. Even if you just try and do this you will realize that your life will finish and still you won't put yourself under everyone in your family and by doing so it doesn't mean to act in a humble way it means that things that you could have done for yourself you don't do them in order for God to bless them or in order for you to be closer to God to be able to pray for them or for them to understand things it could be in a financial way, it could be in a psychological way, it could be in a spiritual way, in every aspect. This is extremely difficult and it's endless. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. Just on um, what Dimi was saying, it just brought to mind a, a story that I'd heard in St. Silvan's biography. And he said that when he was young, he did something wrong when he was washing the dishes or something like that and he'd expected his father to, to scold him for it and anyway six months passed and his father had never said anything and one night his father took him aside and said did you remember that night six months ago when he did that thing wrong I forget exactly what it was and he scolded him for it then and St. Silouan as a boy he asked his father well why didn't you why, why, why has it taken you six months to tell me you know to scold me and his answer was that he was waiting for the right time and he used to pray after that when he became a monk for the patience and humility of his father who waited six months for the right time to, to you know, give his son his lesson. But see, we could say that St. Silwan is who he is because of his father. There are kids that they need more than like six months. They need, and there are kids that they need uh, quicker than six months because otherwise you'll never correct them but the meaning behind what you said is that the father did not react he acted when the time was right with wisdom patience and humility so what he did was not a reaction was a proper action and then that's why St. Silon could never forget this. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, Rota, we talked up until now about pride and humility. And um, whenever we think about pride and the absence of humility, we always think about people that they always get angry they are aggressive, 
they talk back, they, they always have a word to say, as the elders Paisius said, as St. Paisius said. But also the fathers of the church talk about the hidden pride. I think probably this is what you were referring to when you said about someone who is sensitive and he is expecting from others to um, support him, acknowledge that he is sensitive, to feel sorry for him and all these things. First of all, does being sensitive always mean that we have hidden pride? And also, from wherever this sensitivity might come from, how are we to overcome such sensitivities? How are we what? To overcome such sensitivities, to get rid of sensitivities that they hold us back in our spiritual life. Say this again about the sensitivity. Uh, how are we? For, even if these sensitivities are not coming from pride, how are we to overcome, to get rid of these sensitivities in order not to hold us back in our spiritual life and in our relationships with the others? Yes. Sometimes the sensitivities, they are because we want to draw attention. And this could be maybe because no one loved us as a kid. But um, we have to realize what our life was like. We have to realize that God loves us and we have to realize that by being sensitive we don't get anything other than being hurt all the time so the same way that we repent and repentance means to change our mind um, the same way whatever weaknesses we have we have to face them and you do some, something, does something to you and you might be sad for a week and I might tell you, grow up now, by telling you grow up it doesn't mean anything to you if you don't realize that as we said before it's not a big deal what happened to you and, and to realize that what really matters as we said before is the kingdom of God. Once you put the right aim in front of you, which should not be the others paying attention to you, but you going towards God, then the sensitivities, one way or another, they will just start disappearing. You, you have to find the right way of thinking. And we were reading this with the Brotherhood couple of nights ago um, so someone goes to a spiritual father and he says that um, I have cancer and I will die or he says to him I was in a monastery and they kicked me out or that I sinned in the worst way and he was troubled so much that he couldn't he couldn't relax and he sits down he talks with the elder and then he starts crying and saying I don't have any problems anymore and the elder says why? you still have a cancer, you will die they kicked you out of the monastery, you have nowhere to go you did a huge sin so nothing changed but what changed is that this person realizes that his contact with God his communication with God cannot be influenced from all these huge things and once you get this in your mind once you, once you establish this in your way of thinking then what sensitivity? nothing can touch you anything else? we said quite a few things humility never ends and um, the greatest saints they were saying that they were nothing and as we said before they meant it not because they were nothing but because when you know how many chances and how many gifts God has given you and what a 
small percentage you have used out of everything that you have been given, then you realize that you did nothing comparing to someone who have, might have been in the jungle all his life and he just followed his conscience. So, these were a few things to take with us tonight and think for the rest of our lives because humility never ends. And just to say this and to finish with it, if we don't make a serious effort to humble ourselves, nothing can humble us. They can kill us and we'll still have our ego. Nothing, nothing, no one can humble us. No one can take our ego away from us. And God respects that and even God will not touch it. So it's only ourselves that we can uproot our ego from inside us and work towards becoming a humble person. But if we don't do this, if we don't work towards this direction, we just waste our lives. That was it. Thank you for being here tonight. And now we'll go next door for the dinner. We'll say a prayer. And a prayer. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.